Good evening, everybody. Hi, everyone. Good evening. How was your first day? Wow, that's good. Good to see you. Good to hear. All right. Well, I'm quite interested in how your day have gone, so I'll do some counting. Please raise, raise your hand if you have learned something new today. Oh, wow, everyone almost. That's great. Please raise your hand if you have a great, great conversation with somebody you have ne never met before. Oh, wow, that's, that's cool. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, people, I know that some people who attended the Asian Strategic Day workshop and they came up with lots of ideas. For those who were here, uh, were there and here today, have you talked, raise your hand if you have talked to other people about your project. Oh, wow. Great. Wow, that is amazing. Wow, that's good. So, right, and raise your hand if you're hungry and you want to, this session to end quickly. <laughs> Well, not many. Oh, wow, that's impressive. I, I was a little bit disappointed. I thought people would like to go out and have dinner. That's because the food was so good today. People are not hungry now. How right. was the food? How did you like it? Pretty good, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, talking about food, we have some announcement to make. So, firstly, the lunch tomorrow will be served in the same venue that we had today in Junior Manhattan, right? Right there. And we won't serve dinner for our event, so you feel free to go out and explore the vegan options around here, either in this building or outside. There's many great vegan places here. I was told by our Malaysian Vegan Society friends that Malaysia is the most vegan-friendly in country in Southeast Asia. Please let me know whether it's true. Okay. Right? All right, so we have a few more announcements to make. Do you want to start with yours, Tan? Yes, uh, so we thankfully, the charity evalu evaluator just informed us that they offer special like extension of their perennium um, program for AFAT participants. So their deadline for new project has been ended like uh, in October, but, sorry, in September. But they, if, if any one of you want to apply for a project with them for application, they please apply and let them know that you are AFAT participants. And yeah, they were open for that, so extended. Thank you very much, Rika, who is here. Raise your hand if you hear, so people can know and come and reach you. If not, there's table. There are tables outside, outside next to Welfare Matters, and um, yeah, you find Rika and find the information there. I think you said animal charity evaluators, but I think you meant charity entrepreneurship, right? Oh, sorry. Is charity here? CE, charity entrepreneurship. Ex okay. Yeah, excuse me. It's been a long day. All good. For, for all of us. <laughs> okay. So the other announcement we wanted to make is there are some people who are not registered yet, so please stop by the registration desk. You can come after this. We will check you in. We will get you a name tag. Please always wear your name tags all around here. That would be great. Thank you. Anything else from your side, Tan? Are we missing anything? No, I think that's, that's it. it. Yeah. Then I think it's time to introduce to you our wonderful keynote speaker for this evening. He creates a variety of content and material, educational material, for um, around animal ethics and around factory farming and animal sentience. And he is known to speak about these topics in a very, very approachable and non-judgmental way. He is an impressive speaker. I'm sure a lot of you have seen his talk this afternoon. Um, so we'll get to hear more from him this evening. And we will actually screen his documentary, How Conscious Can a Fish Be? Um, tomorrow night at our little film festival. You do not want to miss that tomorrow evening. Um, he currently serves as the president of the board of directors for the Vegan Hacktivists. Please, everyone, let's give a very warm welcome to Ryu Jichua. Thank you so much. Wow, intro music, I've never had that before. 
How's everyone doing? You guys sound like you're doing great. This is amazing. So Julia gave me such a kind intro. So the funny thing about intros is that like, we write them ourselves. She's like, Ryuji is known to talk about these topics in a very approachable way. I wrote that. And I was like, you read that anyways. Um, so, <laughs> so I was hanging out with these people the other day. And it was like four of us. And this girl, out of nowhere, she's like, icebreakers. Like, icebreakers. She's like, yeah, let's do icebreakers. And I'm like... We're like, we're all like really close friends. Like it, that and climate change, there's like no ice to break anymore. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, no, 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 we'll do icebreakers. Let's talk about our biggest insecurity. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. So we all go, we all go around, say our biggest insecurity. It's my turn. And I'm like, what is my biggest insecurity? And then I say, I think my biggest insecurity is that I'm Asian. And it's always been like that. So I grew up in France. And as I was growing up, I never had like role models to look up to. Um, I was in this like, you know, I, I went to this, this bilingual international school. And their whole thing is they're like, we're so multicultural, it's great. And I'm sitting there looking at the yearbook, and I'm like, everyone's white here. And then there's me, I'm like in the corner, like it's just me. Um, and that's kind of like the environment I grew up in. So I never had a lot of confidence um, growing up. And this is relevant to the whole like animal thing later. Um, but yeah, this was just my experience my whole life. And I remember this one time, I was with a friend and so I work making videos. And we were working on this video. And so when you make videos, there's this thing called stock footage. Now stock footage is this like royalty free videos that you can put in your videos. So if you need a shot of like two people shaking hands, you can go on these stock footage websites and you can buy videos of people like shaking hands. Now historically, all the stock footage that you could ever find everywhere is basically all like white people. But recently that's been changing. There's a lot of representation in stock footage as well. It's kind of cool. And so we're working on this video and there's a bunch of stock footage and my friend tells me, he's like, you know, recently I feel like I watched these videos and people put all this stock footage in it and like sometimes I feel like they go like out of their way to like exclude white people. Like I just like, and I feel like it's kind of weird. And I look at it and I'm like, oh, that's crazy. That's like my whole entire life. Like every time I've watched anything for the past like 25 years of my life, like that's literally how I felt. Um, so anyways, the reason why this is important is because when I first became vegan in 2015, which is a very long time ago, almost a decade, which is kind of wild, but anyways, I became vegan, and as I became vegan, I immediately wanted to do something for animals. I had this calling. So I found out about what happens to animals, and all I could think of is I want to do something so bad to help them. And every day, I would wake up, and that's what I would think about. And I would go to class, I was in college at the time, and that's what I would think about. And then I would go to bed, and that's what I would think about. And meanwhile, I would do nothing. I would just like kind of go live my life, go to class and hang out with friends. And meanwhile, in my head, I'm like, all these animals are suffering, I'm doing nothing about it. And for two and a half years, I basically did nothing, despite this burning desire to do something. And part of the reason why was because of my insecurities. One reason was I just had no idea what to do. Like, I just didn't know what, like, literally, I did not know what were my options of what to do if I wanted to help animals. And I couldn't figure it out. But the other part was, I was like, how am I going to make a difference? Like, I'm just one person. This is a problem on a scale so big, I can't even comprehend. Like, how is one person going to make a difference? And part of the reason why I think I felt insecure was because at the time, I was looking at kind of like animal advocacy. And like, I didn't know where to look at the time, so like, I would look on social media. And back then, when you would look on social media at animal advocacy, it's basically these like white guys like kind of like advocating for animals. And I, was, and I love these guys, by the way, but like, I would see that, and I would think to myself, I don't think, like, I don't, I don't think I fit in here. Like, I don't, I don't feel like I fit in. Now, if you follow my work 
up until about maybe like a year or a year and a half ago, I had this, this name that I would go by online. It was Peace by Vegan. And people would ask me, why is your username at Peace by Vegan? And I had this beautiful story. I'd be like, oh, it's because, you know, I want to create, like, like I, want, I, want, I want to create peace. That's like my vision. And like the way I want to do it is by like talking about vegan stuff. So it's like peace, creating peace by using veganism. <laughs> That's like the story. And that was like part of it. But the other part is that like my name is Ryuji. And I'm like, no one can remember that name. Like I've had experiences for as long as I remember. Where, okay, first of all, when I was a kid, every single year I would show up to class and it's like a new teacher. And they would take roll call, so it's like all these names. And all the names are like Paul, Sean, and then there's me. And then like all the teachers, they freak out. They're like, Ryu? And I'm like, oh, it's me, Ryuji. And I've had these years where the teacher would mispronounce my name, but I wouldn't want to correct them. So they would just pronounce it wrong like the whole year, and I would never say anything. Anyways, fast forward to when I'm an adult, I'm like, I know people cannot remember and like spell my name. I get emails, like professional emails for work, where people are like, dear Ryuji, and they just misspell my name. I'm like, how hard is it? My name is like everywhere, it's misspelled. And this just happens over and over and over again. And so that was a big reason why I was like, I didn't want to like put Ryuji as my name. I was like, I need something else, otherwise people are never gonna remember and find me. By the way, sometimes I, I tell this to my friends and they're like, Really, people misspell your name? Oh, that's, that's crazy. That's like, it's like never happened to me. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's so crazy that that's never happened to you, David. Like, anyways, so that was part of the reason why, for the longest time, I was just peace by vegan. Um, in my journey to becoming active, such a big part of me gaining the confidence to actually advocate for animals and pursue what I wanted to do was meeting other people who looked like me. So the first time was actually all the way back in 2016. So I came to, I went to Japan, and this was actually when I first became vegan, I was like, I wanna advocate. And I was like, I don't know what to do. But the reason I went to Japan, by the way, was because I was in college in the States, and I didn't know what to do. So I was like, let me take a semester off, study abroad, and I'll figure out my life. So anyways, I came to Japan, and I'm looking up like these like vegan, this like animal rights stuff. I'm like, is anything going on? And there was stuff going on. And so like I joined these actions. And so I joined these actions by like the Animal Rights Center Japan with Veggie Project, which there's Haruko and Hironimo right here, which are amazing. Um, and that was so empowering for me. I was like, this is so cool. There are people here doing work to help animals. This is amazing. Fast forward to two years later, I'm back in the States. And this is when I'm about to graduate college. And so I have this pressure. I'm like, I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with my life. And I kind of have no idea what I'm doing. Um, but I'm like, okay, let me actually put myself out there a little bit. So I start going to these little events. I go to like a vigil. So a vigil is this event where you go to a slaughterhouse and you bear witness to the animals who are trucked into the slaughterhouse. And I just happened to meet these activists from Canada. And they're like, hey, we're going to a conference in like five days. Do you want, like, do you want to come? And I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. And it was the Animal Liberation Conference in Berkeley. And I remember I drove all the way up there alone. So I asked all my friends if anyone wanted to come and no one wanted to come with me, so it was just me. And I was driving up there and that conference was a magical experience. First of all, it was the first time that I'd seen so many people who cared about the same things that I cared about, who thought about the same things that I thought about. And I was like, oh, you guys exist. Like, I used to think it was, it was just me. And then I met Wayne, who's the co-founder of DXE. And Wayne, for anyone, he's like this Chinese-American guy, he's awesome. And so I, I'm like seeing this guy like lead all these workshops and like co-organizing the, the conference and everything. And at some point, I cross him like in the stairs, I'm just going up these stairs, and there's Wayne, and I'm like, oh, hey, like Wayne, nice to meet you. Like, you know, th thank you for, for doing this. And he looks at me, and Wayne is like so kind, and he just looks at me, he's like, yeah, no, no problem, you know, like if you need anything, just, just let us know, you know, that's, that's why we're here. And that really affected me. That was the moment where I was like, oh, maybe someone like me too can do something in this movement. Maybe I can make an impact. Maybe I can 
be a leader as well. Later on, when I started advocating, some of the proudest moments that I've had is when I, I have people come up to me and I've had this woman, I was at a sanctuary in Texas called Rowdy Girl Sanctuary. And this woman comes up to me and she's Asian American. And she was like, I'm so grateful for the work that you do, that you inspire my son, that maybe he can do something like you later on when he grows up. And I say all this to say that, you know, I've been to about like five conferences this year or something like that. And while I was coming here, I think that this is the one that I was looking the most forward to. Because I was like, it is so cool that we have like an Asia conference. Like, how cool is that? Um, and that just meant so much to me. So thank you for all being here. Now, a little survey. Um, who has been doing this work for like more than 20 years? Is there anyone? 20 years? Okay. 15 years? 10 years? Okay, five years? Okay, now what about people who've been doing this for like one year-ish, less than one year? Are there people? Okay. So I've been doing this for about five-ish years. Um, so I definitely don't want to stand here and act like I can teach some of the veterans here like what you should do. Like the keynote description was like, Ryuji will show us the path ahead. And I'm like, I'm not sure what the path ahead is. I'm, like, I'm sorry, I really don't know. Um, but hopefully, I can inspire some of you to take this opportunity to really build community here. Because I just think, I just personally think, that that is so important. Now I want to talk a little bit about what an animal means to me. And I think this is something that a lot of us relate to, where, to me, the life of an animal is priceless, that I care so much. I remember the first time I went to a sanctuary, and I realized for the first time that these animals, these cows and these chickens and these pigs and these goats, they're just like dogs and cats that I've loved my entire life. They have a personality. They think about stuff. They feel things. And it hurts me so much to see them suffer. Now, for the longest time when I first became vegan, I thought that I was alone. That it was just me that felt like this. But coming to places like this, I realized this is how we all feel here. We think in this way. We feel like this. You know, I come from a movie background. And when you make movies, movies don't happen just by the work of one person. When you go watch a movie, it's like, it's a Tarantino film. It's a Chris Nolan film. But there's a huge list of credits, right? For a movie to get made, you don't just need a director. You don't just need the actors. You need people like the sound designers. You need the director of photography. You need someone that does a job called grip. Grip is a guy, or a girl, could be anyone, who carries around stands. Like, that's just what they do. And without them, the movie would not get made. Making movies is a team sport. And you need all these different people doing all these different things to finally achieve this goal and create this movie. And that's how I think and feel about what we're doing. It's a team effort. Now, I want you to take a second to look around this room and to think about all these things that you feel, what the life of an animal means to you, what you want to do for them. This is what we all share. This is your team. This is our team. Thank you so much.